Very glad to be here. I, uh, I had an interesting day. I'm staying at a hotel just like a block or two from here. And I, I, I went to leave to go get some uh, like breakfast. I was going to get a late breakfast at McDonald's. And then I don't like... Did you guys hear like a giant alarm that went on? <laughs> I don't, you guys heard that? Walking the streets of Oklahoma City. Is that a tornado warning? Uh, here's a tip. Like, tell people from out of town. <laughs> Just, you know. Make us feel welcome. Like, let us know. Because I didn't know what the hell that was. I stepped outside and just... And, um, I'm like, am I not allowed to leave the hotel? Is that what that was? Is I supposed to be quarantining? What's happening? And the best part is I was walking by a guy who was getting out of his car in the parking lot of my hotel. He's obviously not from here because he's staying at the hotel with me. And we just look at each other and he just goes, what is that? And I'm like, I don't know. And I brought it up on the last show, and they're like, it's a tornado warning. And I'm like, yeah, warn people, all right? I thought it was the start of the Civil War. I'm like, is that, are we doing it now? Is it now? I, I almost grabbed a tree branch and snapped it. Just gonna stab a homeless guy in the neck. I'm like, we're warring, everybody starts today. I didn't know what it was. And that scared me. I found out afterwards that it was a tornado warning and it was just a test. And I'm like, cause I'm like that makes sense because I'm like, it was beautiful out today. But I also live in San Diego. I don't know tornadoes. Maybe that's what tornadoes come out of. Just nothing. Because I live in a land of earthquakes and it doesn't care if it's sunny outside. <laughs> so I'm like, maybe the tornadoes are the same situation. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, it was a good way to start the day. It woke me up. Even before I got the coffee in me. I'm like, I'm awake now. All right. And then I walked over to McDonald's, this one right behind me. And uh, they, they're not open. Like, you can do a drive through but, like, the, you can't go inside to order. And I'm like, who's making these rules? Like, McDonald's is like, you can't come inside. I'm like, I'm performing at a super spreader event tonight. <laughs> like, how is this legal? But McDonald's is like, we have morals. Like, we can't. <laughs> we draw the line here. And I, I told my girlfriend about it. I'm like, I can't get McDonald's because it's closed, but the drive thru's open. She goes, go stand in the drive thru. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't do that. That is for, that's for 2 a.m. and drunk. That's what that is for. There's a time and a place for everything. And you can't just stand in a drive thru at 11 a.m. wearing sweatpants. Just like... <laughs> Very glad to be here. This is a notch on the bucket list. I've always wanted to perform across the street from a Bass Pro Shop. So this is like, <laughs> this, is a, this is a big deal for me. <laughs> that is so Oklahoma out there. I don't, like right outside those doors, you guys are really pushing it. You're like, you're in Oklahoma now. Like it is, this is a Bass Pro Shop. There's a Sonic like corporate building. Like it's, you can't get a burger, but there's, like, paperwork there. <laughs> you know, there's Mickey Mantle Boulevard up there, the Flaming Lips Alley, Kings of Leon. I'm performing in a venue between, like, a, a weed store and an IHOP. <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> there's Barry, Oklahoma. Be here. It's nice to do this. Like, I, uh, I live in San Diego, California, and this is highly illegal. Like, this... <laughs> what we're doing right now is the most illegal thing you could do in all of California. <laughs> like, you'd be better off just shooting a bald eagle in the face in California. <laughs> They'd be like, what's he doing? Uh, he's wearing a mask. It's all right. <laughs> we're gonna let it slide. But if we did this, they'd drag us out of here and cuff us. 
It's so crazy. I was in Arizona last weekend, and then this weekend, obviously, I'm here. And it's so funny, growing up in San Diego, like, if you wanted to do something illegal, you would go to Mexico, you know? And then now, if you want to do something illegal, we go to Arizona. <laughs> That's what we do. Arizona, Oklahoma, all the cities that wanted the wall. Like, that's where we go. And now I get it. You didn't want to compete. I get that. You're like, we want those Californians to come in here and spend their money. I'm like, all right, I'm on it. You know? Yeah, this, this last 12 months have been crazy. I've, in San Diego, I've performed at parks. I've performed at the beach and parking lots, all sorts of outdoor places. Even those are illegal now. And I just remember thinking, I was performing at the park, and I was like, man, if someone came up to me January 2020 and was like, I'm from the future, and I'm going to let you know that in about six months, you're going to be performing at the park. I would be like, why? What the hell happened? Like, did I get me too What the hell happened? Why am I no longer allowed indoors? What happened? And then cut to six months later, someone's like, hey, I'm doing a show at the park, would you like to? I'd love to, please sign me up. I miss doing comedy. I've also done Zoom shows. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but yeah, like Zoom meetings, I'm doing this into my laptop. And it's as bad as you think it is. You're just, I'm just sitting on my couch doing this into my computer at people's faces while they're looking at their computer. And like, here's something you might not understand about comedy, but like, if I bomb at a venue, if it goes poorly, I just never go back to that venue, all right? Coming up, I bombed at many bars and restaurants in San Diego that I still won't step foot into, because I remember, you know? I just drive by and snarl at the venue going, I will never go in there. But on a Zoom meeting, I will bomb at a place that I pay rent at, and then the next morning, I'm like, yep, that's where it happened. <laughs> it all went downhill right there. My favorite couch. <laughs> I did three company Christmas parties in December via Zoom. And uh, they, they went as horribly as you'd imagine. <laughs> I did this one. It was for a company. We did it at like one in the afternoon. And it was okay. Uh, there was one lady, she was, I think, a little older. She had her audio on, but she didn't realize it. She had her video off, so it just said Nancy. And by her voice, I could tell she was probably a little older. And I remember I hit a joke, and, like, people laughed. So I heard the laughs coming in. And I was like, all right, that joke worked. And as soon as the laughter died down, Nancy's voice came in. She didn't know we could hear. And she's like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> I gotta get to Costco. That's what. She... And everyone laughed way harder at that than my joke. And there I was, just in my living room, going, damn it, Nancy. Like, you're stealing my thunder. It's been an interesting week, man. Not as interesting as last week. Last week was crazy. You guys watch that? Two Wednesdays ago, the riot at the Capitol. I watched it before the riot started. I watched it because they were counting the electoral votes and I was actually about to tweet how boring it was. In fact, I did. I was like, man, this is so boring. And then as soon as I hit send, it became not boring. <laughs> it's like the universe was listening to my tweets and they're like, Zoltan needs entertainment. Send him in! <laughs> that was wild, man. Like, I don't know if your experience was like mine, but like, all the people I deleted off of Facebook showed up on my TV. <laughs> and I was like, Whoop. all of them. I was like, is that my uncle? I haven't, talked to, I haven't talked to him in months. Why the hell is he dressed like a yak? What is, <laughs> what is going on? I gotta shoot him a message, see what he's up to. It was wild. I don't know what their plan was. I'm not sure they had one. <laughs> I honestly don't think they thought they were going to make it in. That's the look they had on their face. They're like, we're going to raid the Capitol. They probably won't let us in. And then once they got in, they just had like a moment where they're like, what? <laughs> well, what now? <laughs> and then someone was like, selfies? Like, let's, 
let's take selfies. And then it went from like a raid and an insurrection into, it just looked like a bunch of tourists at a Madame Tussauds wax museum. They were like putting MAGA hats on statues and taking pictures. I'm on Nancy Pelosi's desk. And I'm like, I've done this as a tourist. I've done this. It's wild, man. It's a crazy week. And then this week we got uh, we have uh, impeachment number two, which you know what? Personally, what's embarrassing about that? This is the second time around, and I still don't get how impeachments work. <laughs> Do you know how dumb that makes me feel? My girlfriend, she's from Canada, so she's like, so what happens now? And I'm like, I, I don't know. And she's like, didn't this happen a year ago? And I'm like, yeah. You know what it felt like? It felt like being in high school and failing the first quiz, and then that question comes around in the finals again. And you're like, damn it, I'm about to get this wrong twice. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> should have paid attention in history class, but I did not. I also did this last week. I don't recommend you do it, but I went online because they have a thing online where you can type in your information and they will tell you where you are in line for the COVID vaccine. So all they ask you is your age and what you do for a living and what state you live in. So I typed in 33, California, comedian. And they let me know that out of the 40 million people that live in California, I am 33rd millionth in line. And I remember reading that going, just say no. Like, why'd you keep counting? Once you got to 30 millionth, like that wasn't enough. And he's like, no, he's more 33rd millionth. Like, by the time I get the vaccine, it won't even be cool anymore. <laughs> like, once I post the Instagram story of, like, me getting the shot, everyone's gonna be like, yeah, whatever. It's gonna be like me in skinny jeans all over again. <laughs> Late to the party, you know? I'm kind of happy that I'm 33rd millionth in line. I don't like to be in the first wave, you know? Test it on 33 million people, and if they don't grow a second head, all right, then I'll take it. <laughs> I don't like to be the first, you know? But I went online after I saw that I was so late in line to get the vaccine, and I went on social media and so many people were like, I'm never taking the vaccine, they can't make me. And I wanted to reach out and go, oh dude, don't worry. <laughs> They're not thinking about you at all. Like, <laughs> like yelling you're not gonna take the vaccine, that's like if people on third class on the Titanic were like, we're not getting in the lifeboats. <laughs> Don't worry, there's none for you. Like, <laughs> we are not thought about. One of the, uh, one of the better, I think it's gonna be one of the best clubs in the country. Like the vibe here is great, but really what I wanted to show off is this green room. Like there's so many clubs out there that don't have a green room or their green room is a closet with like one burnt out light bulb in it. This is what it should look like. You got a TV, you got a refrigerator in there with all sorts of water and beer and all sorts of stuff. There's chips. And look at this. It's a coffee table made out of chocolates and snacks and sweets. It doesn't even cost that much. I mean, we're looking at, what, $100, $150 worth of stuff right here? Like the other club in this town, I'm not going to name them, but uh, there was no free food or drinks. It would give you an employee discount. It takes very little to feel very special. Not even a good discount. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was, what was it? 50%. 50%. 50 off a- I don't know why I hit two fives. This is not- Yeah, I know. 50%. <laughs> but how much are their full price Bud Lights? Like $3? Yeah, something like that. So they would still have the goal to charge you a buck 50. I remember one time I was working with a comic uh, and the manager at the club, he had like one beer and he made me call the headliner to tell him to come back up to pay his tab. Oh my God. And this is at the club I'm talking about. I mean, can I say the comic's name? 
Yeah. It was Andy Woodhull. I love him. I know Andy Woodhull is great. They called him up to come back to. Play Andy Woodhull is the nicest human, one of the nicest human beings on the planet. And this is like, what I'm talking about. Hey, like, will you will you come back and pay your tab, please? How about I never come back to this club? And that's why this is amazing. It costs. And anytime I work those clubs where they don't give you free food or drink, I purposely don't eat or drink there. And they're like, "Don't you want something?" I go, "No." For the same reason that if you come to my house and I make you a sandwich or give you a beer, I don't give you a tab. Like, I don't open a tab for you. I just give it to you. Hospitality.